Hello and welcome back to Civil Field Trainers. My name is Shadab. In today's class, we'll be seeing how to add this partition wall load onto the slab directly by using E tabs. Okay, that is what we're going to do. All right. So how do we do that? For that, we have approximately three steps. The way I have divided this entire class. The first is going to be the SketchUp models. I'll be explaining what we'll be doing in the SketchUp models. Then I'll take you to our uh, E tabs models. Okay, the same thing I have recreated in E tabs, and we will be seeing how the load transfer will take place to the base over here. Okay, same we'll see bending moments and everything over here. And once you have understood this concept of directly adding the uh, partition wall load onto the slab, I'll be taking to a real life project here, G plus five project, and I'll be showing you how you can uh, do the same for your projects. Okay, so three steps will wind up the entire class. Okay, SketchUp models, ETAB models, and then G plus five project. So basically, what we have here is a partition wall load. Okay, so we have a partition wall over here. We have a proper slab. So in the case one, what is happening here is we have a slab that is supported on all the four sides with beams, and we have columns and everything. Everything is simple and fine. Okay, but in the second project, second model, what we have is we have a partition wall load, and generally, whenever there is a uh, wall coming on top, what we tend to do is we tend to provide a beam at the bottom for the support so that the slab doesn't go under too much deflection. Okay, to avoid that, what do we do? We provide a beam at the bottom. But in some cases, maybe because of the change of uh, mind of the uh, client or something, what they end up doing is once the slab is casted and everything is done, they'll be like, no, we want a partition wall load over here. We want a partition uh, wall over here or main wall they want. So in those conditions, what happens is we have a wall, but we have nothing at the bottom to support for it. Okay. So how do we recreate this condition where we have a wall on top, but there is no beam at the bottom to support it. Okay. But the thing is, I want to apply this wall load onto my slab in e tabs as a line load only. I don't want to convert this line load into a flow load and then apply it. Okay, that will not create a proper model for me. So how do I approach this particular thing where I'm applying partition wall load directly onto the slab? Okay, so I hope you have understood the condition here, right? The very first one is simple slab, which will be applied with a simple dead load and live load and everything. The second one is a normal condition where we have a wall load, then we have a beam supporting at the bottom. And third is the condition that we are going to discuss in this class where we have a wall load on top, but there's nothing to support it at the bottom. Okay, and I'm not going to convert this wall load into what? Slab load. I'm going to apply this as line load only. Okay, so I'll take you to the models now. In the models, again, we have three conditions. I'll just show you the kind of loads we have applied. So if you just right click over here, you can see 1.5 times of uh, uh, floor finishing and plaster and two times of live load. The same thing has been applied to all the three conditions over here. Okay, the, generally what happens is whenever you are applying a beam, okay, whenever you're applying a beam, your slab will break. What do I mean by that is if I run the analysis, I'll show it to you. So if you see here, my complete slab is here, right? But here, if you see my slab has been broken into two parts because of a beam. Okay. Now in normal conditions, what happens is I'll, I'll take you to the video here. This is our thin loop project right now. And we have multiple videos. I'll show you this video. This will be better to understand, I guess. So I'll just open this thing and uh, let's play this. Okay. So what is happening here is wherever a beam is there, right? You can see our beam is here, right? So our slab will break over there. You can see bent up bars are coming over here and a slab is breaking. So in the second condition, which is our, where we have a beam supporting at the bottom, what basically happens to our slabs in those conditions is our slab will break. Okay, so this will be considered as one slab. This will be considered as the second slab. Let me just move a bit in front. Okay, see here, what is happening? We have a beam over here. Okay, on top of this, a wall will come. So we have a beam over here. We have one slab in this side and one more slab in that side. So the slab has been broken. That is what I have done in the it has what I have done. I have provided a beam because I provided a beam. I have broken the slabs. Okay, but how is the condition here? The condition is the slab is one. Okay, our, we have already casted the slab. Okay, then we have our brick wall over here, and I want to apply this brick wall onto the slab. Okay, to see how much amount of deflection and all will I will I get, and what kind of reactions will I get from my slabs, and how much amount of base reactions will I get. This is the condition that we are aiming to get. Okay, so how do I get this condition? For that, I have a third model over here in the in the corner. Where if I just uh, undeform the shape, you can see here also I have a beam, here also I have a beam. But here, if you see the reactions and all, it is not deflecting. Okay, the way this is breaking, right? We are not deflecting like this. So how do we get that? Okay, the simple answer is I have to draw a null beam concept. Okay, so I'll just come over here. I'll just mention the null beam concept over here. That is what we are doing is null beam concept is what we are using here. Null beam has what? It has no mass. Okay, it has no mass or basically if I have to say it has no dimensions. Okay. It has no dimensions. It is just a line to transfer the load. It just transfers the load without deflection. Okay. 
So because it has no length, breadth and depth, it can take the load and it can just transfer the loads directly. So how do we draw this? So if you see here, I have drawn one already. If I just show it to you, you can see the assignments. You can see the geometry. Okay, the geometry you are getting the length. But if you go here, section property, section property is none. It has no length, breadth, it has no concrete, it has nothing in this. Simple null beam. Okay, but if you see, I have applied the wallet on this. So how do I draw this? I'll just show it to you. Let me take you to the plan. Let me come over here. Okay, so I just select this. I just delete this thing. I'll unlock the model first. Okay, so I want to draw my null beam. I'll just select this beam first. I'll delete it off. Okay, now for example, I'm getting a beam over here. Uh, if I just turn on the grid, you can see what is the distance. It is approximately 8 meters from here to here. So let me take something like 5 or 6 uh, value over here. So I just select this beam over here. I have set the beam. I'll go to edit. I'll go to replicate. Okay, see, now if I normally try to draw a beam, what happens? I'll get the first point. But second point, I'm not able to get properly at 90 degrees. Okay, you have to keep adjusting a lot. Okay, this will take too much time. Alright, so what I can do instead is, instead I can just select this existing beam. I'll go to edit. I'll go to replicate here. Okay, please understand what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to replicate this beam. So I'll go to replicate. Okay, and I can just select whatever distance I want. So I know the distance between this column and this column is approximately 8 meters. So let me take uh, something like uh, 4.5 or something. And once you do this 4.5, click outside. Okay, click outside and just go for apply. You can see one, one highlight will come over here. Just go, hover over apply. Okay, you can see the highlight is coming, it is going. Okay, so if I say, for example, 7. Okay, but I don't change this thing. You can see here how it looks, right? So you can just make it 4.5 again or 5 if you want to. I just hover over apply. It is not changing. So click outside and then come over to apply. You can see now it is changing. Okay, so this is a little, little trick that you can use whenever you are trying to replicate something. Just hover over the apply option. It will show. For example, if I give minus 4.5 instead of positive, what happens then? I'll just click outside. You can see it is coming over here. In this direction right so i'll just make it positive 4.5 and i'll click on apply okay so how do i convert this for example if i take uh, this one go for assignment you can see this it has a property over here how do i change the property there are two methods you can do first you can select this beam you can go to assign frames section property there is something called as none over here okay you can click on apply like this it will take the none property okay so if you go for assignment, there's no section property now. Or what you can do directly from here only you can change. For example, if I want to make it 235450, click on OK, it will become that. If I want to change it again, come over here, just click over here and go for make it none and click on OK, it will become a null beam. Okay, null beam basically what? It has no dimensions. Whatever load I apply on it, it will take the load, it will transfer to the beams and everything. Okay, that is the condition that I'm going for because this is the load that is going to act on this entire portion. Alright, so slab also will take some amount of deflection over here because of the load coming on it. Okay, if you see here, what basically we have, we have nothing at the bottom. Okay, so I have to just select this beam now. I'll go to assign, I'll go to frame loads, distributed, and I'll go for wall load. I'll take 5, apply, and click on OK. Now a question might come to you, sir, why do I need to draw this null beam? Can't I just apply the di wall load directly onto the slab? So if you select the slab, you go to assign, uh, assign and frame loads, go for distributed. If you try to assign this load, it will not take it. It won't work because this is basically kiloton per meter and this surface that is there, it's in meter square. Okay, so it will not work for you. All right, so what you have to do is to make sure that you're getting a proper condition. You're supposed to draw a null beam first and then on that null beam, you can apply whatever load you want to apply. Please understand this, this is very important. So we have three conditions. The very first condition is slab with no wall. Second condition is a slab with the wall. But here what we have done, we have taken a beam dimension over here because of which the slab is breaking. How it is breaking? Like how? Like this. Okay, we have one slab over here. Then we have a beam because of which the slab breaks because we have done bent up bars and everything, right? And after that, we have one more slab in that corner. All right. Then third, what is we have is a condition where the beam has no dimensions at all. It is a null beam. It takes the loads. It transfers the loads to your beams and columns and slabs. Okay. Now, when I run the analysis for this, you can actually see how much amount of deflection we are getting. But what is the difference between all these three uh, concepts that we have? So you can see here, right? So here I'm getting something like, let me just change it to dead load and everything because it will not consider or else combination. Click on apply, click on OK. So for so to show you the differences, okay, this is not a, a very good value. It's a very bad value. Okay, but to show a very good difference in values, I have applied too much amount of load and everything.
okay so they are, how much we are getting here something around like uh, it's an orange so 44 to 48 is the range for over here here i'm getting something around like 52 or something like that and here i'm getting the same higher amount of value but here we have a very circular uh, you know distribution of load okay so this is how it will vary if i take you to the 3d model now and if i just show you the base reactions click on apply you can see here for this model in the middle see because bm has its own uh, density it has its own weight the amount of load you're getting is something like 290 290 277 277 290 something but here because we have a null beam that amount of load is not over here 277 277 something we are getting like that okay so if you saw the deflections so this this has a different reaction this has a different reaction this has a different reaction okay so you can see the reflections you can see your bending moments and everything click on apply click on okay all right and you can see here we're getting 148 here we are getting how much 238 okay generally what happens whenever we break our slabs this is what we get because it has its own density and everything we're getting uh, too much amount of deflections and all and moreover we have to give a release also in the corners if you give the release then what happens is it becomes zero moment at the bottom sorry in the corners okay and we get more amount of uh, moment in the bottom that's a different concept i think i have made a video on this already moment release okay so like this you can see how it varies we have a simple slab we have a slab with a proper beam condition we have a slab with a null beam condition there is no moment there is nothing in the null beam whatever load is coming it is coming on what it is coming on the slab it is coming on the beams and everything okay so like this you can do so now the third prop, uh, part is i hope you have understood what happens right the kind of reactions we are getting click on apply click on okay you can see here basically what we're going to do is we are going to have more amount of uh, reinforcements coming over here okay so that we can make sure all the negative moments that we are getting we can balance it out and once again the values is quite high i have kept it like that deliberately so that you can see the differences okay generally so much amount of deflection is not allowed go for 10 15 mm that's more than sufficient if you can yeah, if you're getting values more than that then you're doing something wrong in the model okay so this is what our condition is now how do i do the same thing for an existing project like this so for that i have first i have to unlock the model okay we unlock the model first then for example i want to draw a partition wall over here okay so what i'll do either i'll select this i'll go to uh, edit i'll go to replicate again this is 4.17 say for example at 2 meters i want to draw a partition wall okay so i'll take 2 meters then i'll go for apply and you can see how it comes over here right if i have by mistake i had given minus 2 something for for example instead of x i'm giving y value okay so i'm giving something like minus uh, 4 something you can see it looks something like this you see it, it looks something like this okay that way you'll understand something is wrong over here so let's make it zero let's make it uh, 2.1 or something like that click on apply and you can see here it is coming over there so click on apply click on ok then what you can do is select this particular option right click on it section property you can go and change it to none then click on ok now whatever load you have supposed to apply on this particular object you can go ahead and apply that load because i'm getting a wall here i will go to assign and it is a four inch wall six inch wall whatever the uh, difference is you are supposed to calculate that frame loads distributed then we can apply your wall loads to whatever level you want to apply for example this is going to be five kilometer per meter and click on apply and click on ok like this you can apply all right this is how you can apply the partition wall load onto your slab okay so here i have got a how to apply and delete wall loads in etaps i have created a class on this already you can go and check it out if you don't know how to apply the wall loads and everything how to calculate the wall loads you can go and check out the whole thing okay i have a, a different videos also on how to apply water tank load and everything you can go and check those videos out as well okay so this is what it is how you can apply the partition wall load onto the slabs and if you're interested you can come and check out our content over here and if you want to uh, get access to all these videos and everything in the form of lectures then you can go and check out our construction sequence of a real life project crash course basically i have taken three to four of our projects running projects of nansu constructions i have taken that and we have created a class on this so that you can understand how the complete construction takes place okay and if you want to learn software we have etap safe and rcdc software with us uh, uh training with us and you can go and check out the content over here a lot of stuff is included in this the x factor of this particular uh, training is that in this you go and check out uh, this one update etaps 21 here everything starting from the uh, creation of grid in etaps to all the way to submission drawings of beam columns slabs and everything everything is covered in one go okay 
so not just creating drawings in rcdc we take those drawings from rcdc we take it back into autocad and after taking it into autocad we create proper submission drawings for the clients okay so to that extent we have covered everything in this so it is not a simple etabs course it's actually a complete building design course that's why i have mentioned as structural mastery course okay not only that if you open up it's both in hindi and english yeah, etabs cf rcdc everything separately available here for you to access and learn so if you are interested please go and check out our courses i'll give all these links in the description uh, if you are if you are a beginner you have no idea about anything i'll i'll recommend this course for you construction sequence of a real life project that will give you an understanding of how the project execution takes place what are the steps involved when you are supposed to issue which drawing to the site all of this is there in this particular course we have to do three projects instead of just tinlu project if i am not wrong uh, we have matikari also kolkata also all this uh, this is a client actually so we have all this uh, projects that you can go and watch okay main project is tinlu only in that so with that being said i hope you have understood how to apply partition wall load onto the slabs in etabs a very simple concept we use null beams and it has no mass it just transfer the loads without deflection okay so this is how you approach the application of wall load uh, partition wall load onto the slabs in etabs i hope you have understood the class if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you